Also an education consultant who makes science videos. A victim of the Porter Ranch gas blowout contacted me and told me that she had a 10 centimeter fibroid in her uterus. She then asked if I thought that the fibroid was caused by intoxication by the gas blowout. I looked into the literature and found a possible link. It's not proof of a direct cause, but it's worth thinking about. Fibroids are abnormal growths in the uterus wall. Fibroids can grow in various different places uh, in the uterus. Fibroids are not cancerous and they don't become cancer, but they can cause complications such as pain, abnormal menstrual bleeding, and other complications. To give you an idea of how big fibroids can be, here is an image. A large softball is 3.8 inches in diameter. So this should give you an idea of how big fibroids can get. So what makes fibroids grow? Let's first talk about the female menstrual cycle. In the first half of the cycle, the egg develops until maturity and it is released, starting the second half of the cycle. During this cycles, the wall of the uterus begins to thicken, eventually sloughing off, which is menstrual bleeding. While the hormones that control this process, two of them are estrogens and progesterones. And it's these same hormones that cause fibroids to grow. To understand why menstrual hormones cause fibroids to grow, we need to understand how menstrual hormones work at the cellular level. Estrogen, one of the menstrual hormones, can enter the cell and before it does anything, it needs to bind to a protein receptor here known as the estrogen receptor. The estrogen receptor is normally inactive, but when it binds to a hormone, it becomes active and then enters the nucleus, binds to DNA, and turns on hundreds of genes, which cause the wall of your uterus to grow during the menstrual cycle. It turns out that fibroids have higher levels of estrogen receptors than do the normal uterus tissue. What does this mean? It means that more estrogen receptors than fibroids means that fibroids will grow faster in response to estrogen than does the normal uterine wall. So what about the Porter Ranch gas blowout victims. In 2017, Dr. Jeffrey Nordella found that Porter Ranch gas blowout patients had prolonged medical complications such as migraines and nosebleeds, and that these same patients had higher than normal levels of lithium in their hair. He also found that they lived in homes that had water that was contaminated with lithium at higher than normal levels. Why should the presence of metals in humans be of concern when it comes to fibroids? Well, four studies shown that in mice, treating the mice with lithium caused the uterus tissue to grow faster in response to estrogen. In humans, a side effect of lithium treatment for uh, psychosis, such as schizophrenia, is known to have a side effect, which is abnormal menstrual cycles. There are no studies in women showing that lithium treatment for psychosis causes a growth in fibroids or uterine tissue because women who have psychosis already have abnormal menstrual cycles to begin with. Other studies in the literature show that there is a relationship between a metal called cadmium and fibroids. Higher levels of cadmium in the blood is associated with more severe fibroids. So if you live in the area surrounding Porter Ranch and the Aliso Canyon oil field, I suggest monitoring yourself. Get blood and urine tests one to two times a year for metals such as lithium, uranium, and cadmium. And if you're a female, you should get ultrasounds to check for fibroids once or twice per year. Most importantly, talk to your physician. I want to point out that I'm not a doctor, I'm a cancer biologist, and more importantly, I'm not your physician. I'm just a friend trying to help you, help yourself, and your loved ones. Two final points. Here is an example of what a fibroid looks like in ultrasound. Lastly, in 2014, the FDA warned that if you have fibroids and you're removing them by surgery, you should avoid a procedure known as the laparoscopic power morselation, which is breaking up the fibroid into smaller chunks before taking it out. This method turns out can cause undetected uterine cancer to spread inadvertently uh, because you're removing the fibroid. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. Hang in there.